we took a trip with the Model X to Las Vegas. So check out the road trip video, but if you want to skip straight into the data, check out the description below. I have all the chapter markers there. I also have a spreadsheet, so check out the links as well down below in the description. Enjoy. Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Sherwin and on this video, we are going on a trip. This time we will be going to Las Vegas. Viva Las Vegas. And I found a really cool compartment in the trunk of the Model X that's perfect for people like me. So check this out. You could fit, a, what is this, a six pack or eight pack of Guinness and two bottles of wine perfectly. So make sure you go check that out in your Model X. You could fit uh, different types of drinks there. So we went ahead and charged to, I believe, 94% state of charge. And we're gonna go ahead and start this trip. Okay, so we are at our first supercharging stop. We are here at um, Eddie World Yermo. How much is it here? It's like 42 cents. Um, and these are supposedly 150 kilowatt, but I'm at the um, like the smaller charging one, so they're up to 72 kilowatt. I arrived at with 66% state of charge. Um, at around 103 I believe and right now we are charging at 60 kilowatt um, rate and we're gonna hang out here so we're here at Eddie world I keep saying Eddie's world but it's Eddie world there's no s <laughs> and it's in Yermo California this is one of our usual stops whenever we go to Vegas and we've never stopped here before. Uh, we've only started stopping here because of the supercharger. Um, otherwise, like we would just pass through. And this place is really cool. There's a huge store next to the gas station or part of the gas station, because there's a gas station here. And um, we found this Jebba, Jeb, Jebediah? Jeb, Jebba what? <laughs> Jeb, the, I don't know. I'll, <laughs> it's beef jerky and it's really delicious um, a little pricey I think it's like 30 bucks per half a pound so it's like 60 something for one whole pound but um, and I think it's very delicious uh, we used to get the alien jerky up in Baker but um, no longer we prefer the Jed Jedediah Jed I'm looking at the sign Jed Jedediah. Uh, I'll, I'll put the link down below but it's really good um, and so they also have like a food court here pizza and different snacks and a huge selection of like candy and uh, Funko products there's a, a lot of Funko products here um, so if you're into collecting those things there's some stuff here that I have never seen before and so um, but we are charging at a uh, slower um, charging station. It's 72, up to 72 kilowatt, but there's regular superchargers on the other side. Um, same, same parking area, but uh, more lined up against the fence. But we didn't really need to stop here um, because we, are, we were at 60 something percent state of charge. But I started noticing in the map um, that the superchargers were getting busy there was like a wait time um, but we were gonna make the stop anyway to get beef jerky and one of the youngins was getting um, hungry so we were gonna make a stop anyway and so if there wasn't any um, chargers available then we were gonna either get in line or just park somewhere and go in and get some snacks but um one thing here one of our friends who has a model y made a late night vegas trip and they charged here in the middle of the night um, and I guess um, when they got home they found uh, like BB or buckshot damage to their vehicle so just keep that in mind if you're gonna charge here especially late at night the charger right behind the chargers is um, a residential area and so there was probably people messing around and shooting up uh, EVs um, because they they're nearby um, so just just be aware of that be careful um, if you're charging here late at night um, they they may start shooting uh, BB guns at your 
uh, Tesla, so be careful. But other than that, um, we're normally uh, traveling during the day anyway, so, but so far so good. The drive's been okay. A lot of cars, uh, a lot of cars. So I don't know if people are on their way home because it is a Sunday. So the, the weekend Vegas uh, travelers, um, and at the same time, it's, it's the beginning of the week, uh, Thanksgiving week. So there's probably people also going to Vegas. Um, so it's Sunday traffic right now. And um, yeah, it's, it's pretty busy here. So we're, I'm going to go ahead and wait for this thing to charge and waiting for Abby and the boys to uh, come back um, and uh, go from there. All right, time is 1.39. We are at 96% state of charge. This session costed $13.29. Uh, what else is there? This is Yermo, uh, 22 stalls at 150 kilowatt, um, but we are at the 72 kilowatt. All right, we're at Baker, 80% state of charge, 2.34 p.m. And Baker has uh, 40 stalls at 150 kilowatt, 43 cents. All right, so the other charger doesn't work, so we're at 79%, 238, but same uh, supercharging. Okay, so we didn't really need to um, stop here, but uh, we would have been at 55% state of charge if I didn't charge and we're gonna be there for a couple of nights park um, I don't know, but we always stop here. There's a Dairy Queen. There's a Shell gas station um, And the chargers were full before we got here, but when we got here, it's good So it is busy, but we still found um, a spot to charge without wasting or not wasting we found a place to uh, charge um, without having to wait um, the first one that we picked it didn't work although I think it's because I was at 80% and because it's busy it didn't allow me to charge from 80% but when we moved to the next slot over um, it went down to 79% and probably that's what triggered the uh, initiation of the charge I'm not sure but we're able to charge and I set it to 90% so we're gonna wait until we're at 90% and continue on. All right, 89% state of charge, it's 251 and it costs four dollars and 73 cents. All right, we have arrived, it's 54% state of charge, 417 p.m. All right, so we are here in our room at Vidara. We got a corner suite and the view is insane. Uh, too much glare, but I'm gonna try <laughs> to shove it against the window. So you enter the room, we got a kitchen right here, and sink, dishwasher. So Vidar is kind of like, um, like an apartment or something that didn't go all the way. Like a condo, I believe. It was supposed to be a condo, but then it turned into a hotel. Um, but we got a microwave, a stove, the paid fridge is right there. Don't touch, too expensive. That's why we bring our own right here. All right, so room service is dropped off some Cups, dishes, and some cooking pots and pans. And then, when you go this way, this is like a living room with the corner view. It's really amazing. And that couch turns into a bed. And this is the bedroom. That is the view, another corner. Very nice, very nice. And this is the bathroom. It has two doors, one on the other side and dual sinks. 
Got a tub, shower, and vanity mirror thing table, I don't know. Also forgot to mention, we have washer and dryer. Okay, tired a little bit. I'm in the bathroom trying to find a um, quiet place to record. So we are in our hotel, just checked in. I'm a little weary and worried about our car because I'm not used to doing valet, but in Vidara, it's only valet. And I double check with the, uh, the valet person and ask, hey, you guys have driven the, the new Teslas before, right? And he said, yes. And I'm like, the touch screen where you change, uh, you know, park, drive, reverse. He's like, yep, we've done it. I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> but I'm still a little worried, but, cause you know, th there's always signs about, well, we're not responsible for any damage to your vehicle. So I'm like, man. And whether or not they're responsible is just a, a huge headache if you have to hassle with all that stuff. But anyway, so hopefully um, they're going to take care of it. But it's not our first time um, checking in at Vidara and they've always been pretty good. So uh, we're going to be checking to see what we're going to have for dinner. We're probably going to go to Italy, eat, eat Italy over at MGM, uh, MGM, not MGM Grand, but uh, Park MGM um, and see how that goes. All right, so we are, or I am, here at Italy in um, MGM, Park MGM. And this is always one of my places that I go to. They have the good uh, mushroom shiitake mushroom. And uh, some sandwich, uh, something, something koto. Um, but the boys and Abby already ordered hamburger at um, Aria. So I'm all alone here, but I'm gonna go ahead and um, take it to go so I could enjoy it back in the room. Plus I got more drinks over there that I brought. I got some wine um, because I always like to bring my own drinks just to save a little bit of money. Uh, but yeah, I, I, we go crazy on the food here though. Love the food. Uh, we try different things and sometimes the same thing because once we enjoy something, uh, we just continue to keep ordering it. So just waiting for my order and I'm going to head back to the room, go eat some dinner and hang out for a few and probably uh, go gamble afterwards. After having some dinner in the room, we made our way downstairs. Bidara has no casino within the property. The closest casino is Aria, which is right in front of Vidara. There is a sidewalk to cross the street with no car traffic. We frequently visit Las Vegas because the boys love to stay at hotels and we get complimentary rooms at MGM properties. We usually stay at the Sky Suites in Aria but they didn't have any available suites. Out of all the MGM properties we tried, Aria and Vidara are our favorites. Because we are platinum status, we can use the VIP lounge where there are some light snacks and beverages. The Aria lobby decorations changes during the seasons. Currently they have a giant snowflake. Day 2. Waking up in our room. The view is just nice during the day as it is at night. I love these blinds. I should look into motorizing our blinds at home. We had a small breakfast because we had reservations at one of our favorite places to eat, Din Tai Fung at Aria. It's delicious and we always eat here when we're in Las Vegas. It's a Taiwanese restaurant that serves dim sum and other dishes. You can see them flatten out the dough, add the stuffings, and seal it. We ordered sweet and sour pork baby back ribs. 
braised beef noodle soup, Taiwanese cabbage with garlic, pork shao long bao, pork buns, shrimp and pork shou mai, vegetable and mushroom fried rice, chicken fried noodles. For dessert, we ordered the chocolate buns. They have melted chocolate or Nutella inside. Next, we headed to Bellagio. We can either take a tram, which connects Aria, shops at Crystal, and Bellagio, or make our way back to Vidara. There is a walkway that connects it to Bellagio. That's what we did. We wanted to check out the conservatory. They change the design every season and it's beautiful. They have a winter holiday theme going on right now. The displays are made of flowers. This is a must place to visit. We hung out for a few hours then checked out the fountain show. Tuesday morning here. We've been here in Vidara for what is it? Uh, Sunday night, Monday night, two nights and three days. The Model X is in valet and I checked it and the state of charge is I believe about 42%. So we've already used up about 11% of it just sitting there. Um, and it's not even seven o'clock. And I want to get some Starbucks coffee before the line gets long. So the boys and Abby are still asleep. And I'm 
this out here in the hallway. I'm gonna go check to see what um, the area where the car is at looks like. So you can take a peek actually um, with sentry mode enabled. You can uh, remotely look at what the camera sees at the moment and this is what it sees. My son wanted to check out the aquarium at Caesar's Palace, so that's what we did. We passed through Bellagio, crossed the bridge, and made our way to Caesar's Palace. We then went back to Bellagio to have lunch at the buffet. The line was long, but because we have our Platinum MGM card, we had a much shorter line. Much shorter. I had three rounds of food and dessert. Later in the evening, we had hot dogs at New York, New York, and of course, we had to get our s'mores. We are at 34%. The time is 9.42 on Wednesday. All right, we are here at the Link Supercharger. 32% state of charge, 9.57. So the Link Supercharger is at 27 cents per kilowatt. And there's a parking code at 5693 pound. There are 24 stalls, 250 kilowatt max. Let's 
We usually charge at Link Supercharger because it's 250 kilowatts speed and the rates are great, even better since the last time we went here. This place has an outdoor mall with many stores and restaurants, two of which we always visit. The first is the Honolulu Cookie Company. These cookies are delicious. Next, we go to Girardelli to get some squares and hot cocoa. Abby decided to have breakfast, but our charging session is almost done. Okay, so we are at 98% state of charge. It is 1046. This charging session cost $17.82. So the charging is done, but the boys and Abby are, <laughs> are eating, so I am tasked to go look for parking elsewhere because we're no longer charging so i'm gonna go look for parking around here i'm not really familiar with the area so um, let's go ahead and find some parking okay so we found parking it's right across the street looks like uh the first hour is free and then 15 dollars after that so hopefully they're almost done eating I had my coffee and a little bit of scrambled eggs this morning, so I'm pretty much good to go. All right, 98% state of charge, 11.17 a.m. All right, we are at 67% state of charge. The time is 12.59. We are at the Baker Supercharger, 40 cents per kilowatt, 40 stalls, 150 kilowatt max. All right, 89% state of charge. 1.31 p.m. and cost is $8.40. Alright, we are home at 46% state of charge, 4.15 p.m. Alright, so here's the data. Total miles driven is 442 miles. Total energy used is 144 kilowatt hours. 326 watt hour per mile and total cost of charging is $44.24. That's round trip. We stopped four times and a total of two hours and nine minutes were spent at superchargers. If you look at the spreadsheet I shared, the cost is comparable to a 40 mile per gallon car and pumping gas at $4 per gallon. I don't know of any gas car that has the same size as the Model X that is 40 miles per gallon, nor do I know where to get gas at $4 per gallon. In Baker, gas starts at $6.79, although it is a remote area. If I were just to take the average uh, supercharging cost at $0.38 cents per kilowatt hour and multiply the energy that we used, 144 kilowatt hours, then the cost of the trip would be about $54.72. It's more because I charged at home to 94% before we left for the trip and I didn't include that in the breakdown. This trip was not as far as the Northern California trip a few weeks ago, but we've done this trip on our Tesla before plenty of times, but this is the first time we used the Model X. We anticipated high usage of the superchargers because 
people were going home it was a sunday and at the same time people were leaving for vegas because it's the beginning of the week beginning of a holiday week thanksgiving but we did not run into any wait times as we were headed to the chargers the map did show that there were no available uh, stations but by the time we got there there was plenty to to uh, park and charge having done this trip many times i would highly recommend charging at baker or have high state of charge as you pass through the area there are a lot of uphills after baker that will use lots of energy there's a supercharger at the state line at buffalo bills but why risk it i would suggest to be above 50 percent but plan on making a stop at buffalo bills otherwise if you're at a higher state of charge like we were you can make it to las vegas with no issues but do anticipate the energy lost if you are staying a few nights so i want to correct myself i had to look up more information about the cabin overheat protection that's what it's called and i keep calling it something else but it's overheat protection and so um it's only meant for overheating and not for i guess freezing temperatures or cold temperatures i was under the impression that it was using energy to uh, preheat the cabin automatically but it doesn't so I had to look it up and there's actually a page on the Tesla website um, that explains uh, winter driving tips I have that link down below as well if you want to check it out but um, one of the things that on that page is it says we recommend leaving your Tesla plugged in as much as possible when it's not in use. This uses the charging system rather than your battery to retain the heat. So retain the heat. My guess, cause I'm not an expert, but my guess is it's not retaining the heat of the cabin, but retaining the heat for your battery. Um, keep in mind your battery has to maintain a certain temperature in order for it to, uh, I guess, perform or be used. Um, do remember that the car needs to anticipate that you're going to drive at any time. So in order for that to happen, in order for that to be possible, the battery is always has to be conditioned so that um, it could be used at any time. So it has to heat up that battery at a certain temperature so that you can just jump in the car and leave. So the, the loss of energy that uh, we got while it was parked was due to it keeping the temperature of that battery at a certain at a certain temperature so so that's where i think the uh, all that energy loss was spent on but um it, it was a substantial amount of energy loss i have tesla mate installed in one of my servers at home and i have the model y and model x connected to it and i looked i looked up the i think it's called vampire drain report and it says from november 20th at 4 31 pm to november 23rd at 9 37 am it lost 18 percent state of charge which is equivalent to 64.72 miles or 17.91 kilowatt hours so that that's what happened during those nights um so i i believe that that's the amount of energy it used to maintain a certain temperature for those batteries now there was an incident of phantom braking right after victorville we were in the far right lane about to pass an on-ramp. The Model X reduced its speed considerably, about 15 miles per hour in like one to two seconds. So it was a hard deceleration. I recovered by accelerating back to the speed limit. I checked behind us to make sure no one was following. You never know how people react these days with all this road rage happening. So just, just be careful out there. Again, this is why when you use autopilot, always be ready to take over. I mostly use autopilot when there's less cars on the road. So back to the temperature thing, um, as a reminder to all my Northern Hemisphere friends and owners, winter is coming. Battery performance is not as efficient in cooler weather. Also, it's a good idea to use the GPS if you will supercharge, even if you know where it is. This will precondition the battery so it will be optimized for charging. Another reminder is if you park your car outside, your batteries will be cold when you start driving. Depending on your software version, your regen braking may be disabled, so be careful and anticipate this. And because batteries are cooler in the winter season, anticipate in more range loss. What do you think about this data compared to my Northern California trip? It is a shorter distance, but overall it is cheaper to drive an EV. At this point, 
we've adjusted to supercharging stops and don't mind it at all. The holiday schedules made the chargers busy, but as soon as we reach them, there is always a, a place to charge. It will get worse as EV adoption grows, but Tesla continues to expand its charging network. I'm not concerned at all if you plan for it. I'm trying to convince Abby to go on another Vegas trip, but without the kids. Maybe an overnight trip, but I'd like to bring my Model Y performance. I'm curious if the range loss would be the same. Would supercharging costs be the same? It might be cheaper because of the smaller battery, or not. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please check out my Northern California trip if you haven't seen it yet. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.